Hi, this is Randall Schwartz, host of Floss Weekly. This week, Guillermo Amaral joins me. We're going to be talking about water. Lots and lots about water. It's a big water simulation system. You're not going to want to miss this, so stay tuned. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Floss Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Floss Weekly with Randall Schwartz and Guillermo Amaral. Episode 332, recorded April 15th, 2015. Mohid. It's time for Floss Weekly, the show about free, libre, open source software. I am your host, Randall Schwartz, Merlin at Stonehenge.com, bringing you each week, almost every week, most of the weeks anyway, the movers, the shakers, the big projects, the little projects, projects you may be using every day, not aware of it, projects you may have never heard of but want to download right after the show and go play with. Uh, joining me this week is Guillermo Amaro. Welcome back, Guillermo. Hey, Randall. How's it going? And uh, you're in your uh, secret bunker in uh, Tijuana somewhere? That's right. My home lab. I, I just got back from vacation, so I am still a little jet lag. So excuse me if I nod off for a second. Awesome, awesome. Okay, yeah, well, we'll keep, we'll keep poking you electronically through the machine here. I'm, of course, back <laughs> in Santa Monica. If you, you if those watching the video, you recognize the tree behind me. That says my uh, office is a zip recruiter uh, who's been paying my bills for a little over a year now. Uh, so, as usual, we have a really great show lined up. Uh, we have this week, uh, back by popular demands, it was actually scheduled for a couple weeks ago and we had technical problems there, but uh, Mohid, which is a water simulation software, uh, fluid dynamics, all sorts of wonderful things involved in that. Uh, uh, we've got some a little bit of graphics for those of you that are watching the video to, we, we can show a little bit later. Um, and it looks like it's pretty comprehensive and it seems like it's been around for a long time. In fact, I, I, don't, I don't want to give this away. Oh, I guess I will. It's written in Fortran. I think this is the first project we've had on Floss Weekly written in Fortran. So uh, we'll have to ask the uh, the guests about that. Uh, what, what do you know about it so far there, uh, Guillermo? Uh, I know very little about uh, water modeling. Uh so this is going to be a really nice experience to figure out wh what exactly it means. Uh, uh, my guess is that uh, they're going to model water. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you might be out on a limb there, but uh, I think you're probably pretty <laughs> close on. So let's go ahead and, and bring our guest, uh, Ramiro Neves. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hello, Randall. It is a yeah. pleasure to be here. Very good. And where are you speaking to us from? I'm speaking to you from Lisbon. Um, from the Technical University, uh, uh, actually from the University of Lisbon. We have just, uh, before we were part of the Technical University of Lisbon, but very recently, the Technical University of Lisbon has made a fusion with the Classical University of Lisbon in order to get a bigger university. Awesome, awesome. In fact, I was just in Lisbon, I think it was like... Well, it was like four months ago now. I was on a cruise ship. I was just there for a day, uh, and I've been there just for a day, like three other times, too, because I do a lot of cruising. But uh, very cool, very cool. Well, welcome to the show, and let's go ahead and bring on Ricardo Miranda. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hello, Randall. Hi there. Hello. And where are you speaking to us from? I am in Lisbon, also in the Technical University, uh, university uh, Lisbon University. Uh, can, can you guys see each other? Are you in the same room? No, no, no. Yeah, okay. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just want to make sure we're actually using Skype for a reason here, so that sounds really good. Well, let's go back to Romero for a second. Uh, why don't you give us the 30,000-foot view, or I guess there's some number of meters, it'd be like 10,000-meter view of, of, of what Mohit is all about. Yeah, Mohit is a, a model that was developed in order to simulate the movement of water in free surface flows and in groundwater flows and also to simulate the water quality so in order to, uh, uh, to perform uh, environmental management. Okay, and uh, how long has it been around? Since it's written in Fortran, it must be quite a while, right? Yeah, yeah, in fact, it's uh, almost as old as me. It is, uh, we, I started developing it when I did my PhD thesis some 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, and since then, it has been developed, it has, involved, it has involved something like 15 people, 15 PhD theses, and so it has grown uh, a lot. Okay, so what would I be trying to solve if I'm reaching for Mohid? It's obviously something about water, but m more likely, what, who, are the, who would be using this and, and to answer what kinds of questions? 
of the kind of questions that we are uh, uh, dealing with are all questions dealing with the um, environmental uh, with the environment so we have uh, we can simulate the fate of uh, uh, material that is discharged by a city wastewater uh, wastewater uh, we can simulate the sediment transport uh, we can simulate a uh, oil spill so we can simulate anything that is related with the movement of the water that is transported by water and it can be and uh, or that can live in the water uh, the things that live in water we cannot simulate all of them but we can simulate the cycle of nutrients so we can learn how the organic matter is consumed by bacteria how the bacteria is consumed by uh, zooplankton and uh, we can simulate the phytoplankton so we can simulate with all the basic processes related uh, with the water quality we can simulate the growth of mussels and we can do some simulation of uh, growth of fish as well and what's uh, so you were are you the originator of mohi then yes i i am the originator of this code in the sense that uh, but i'm not the originator of all the ideas the ideas are much older than me so uh, i am the originator of this code in the sense that uh, this code integrates some ideas that were former f formerly from myself and then they have been adopted and modified and improved especially improved by the students that i have up to now okay and, and ricardo is, go ahead sorry yeah yeah and it is written in fortran huh? Because uh, uh, Fortran is the maybe the most uh, the oldest language dealing with co with computation, and uh, it is still the the fastest uh, the fastest codes that we can get. They are uh, uh, written in Fortran. It, wow, cool, cool. And Ricardo, what's your role with the project? Okay, I I became involved as a student in, in the development of Moid. Uh, uh, in my master's uh, thesis and I, I began doing modeling stuff uh, but later on I became more interested in the software engineering part so I did lots of the architecture and the engineering of the model and it says here in your bio it says that you did a major refactoring of Mohid finally introducing object-oriented principles in the 90s so that's that's a good so there's their object-oriented fortran nowadays there is some kind of object-oriented fortran back in the 90s there was not uh, really object-oriented fortran but since it has um, pointers and and you can manage memory you can uh, create a framework that uh, behaves like objects Okay, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm curious about how simulation software is created and updated and maintained. Um, is, it, is it that you take real-world observations and try to develop the equations that would have come up with those and through trial and error you can keep tweaking those? Or is it uh, 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 maybe that you start from first principles and create software that's calculating that and then notice that it actually matches the real world uh, output. Uh, what's what's more prevalent yes. in something like Mohit? Yes. No, no, it's, it's a real, uh, first principle. So in uh, modeling uh, movements of water, there are the Navier-Stokes equations, for instance, mm -hmm. that you put in the model. Uh, and the observations are used to validate the model. And uh, you also do some predictions and you Afterwards, you check that the predictions are in accordance with what actually happened. Because I was but, looking through uh, your game. But this is, not a, this is not a model that mimics the world. This is a model that really uses the uh, physical principles of the movement of water. That's, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I bet, you, you know, playing with this 10 years ago, 15 years ago, Looking at the relative computing power you have available to you now, does that affect the way you do the computations? Yes, because uh, back in the 90s, it was mainly single-threaded computing. Now we are dealing with uh, uh, multi-threading, so uh, 
and we are putting the model in uh, high performance computers with hundreds of cores so this is what we are working on now in terms of software engineering uh, just so we get a sense of that because you probably see it a lot more than most of us although you know i've had computers around for 20 years um what's the typical processing time that you had to do something in 20 years ago versus doing it now uh is it can you just give us a, like a ballpark yeah, how many I, orders may do? i believe that the, the problem is kind of reverse engineering so usually you want to result in in uh, one night you put the work the computer working late in the evening and you in the morning you have results to work on so what i would say is that the improvement with the performance of computers allowed more uh, sophisticated and uh, larger models with more uh, nodes and this kind of stuff but the the long of the length of the run is still the same is one day one night but yeah. maybe you have to have something to say about it. Yes. Uh, in fact, in fact, for describing the, the space, we use a grid, and this grid uses a, a, a step that uh, uh, can be larger or thinner. So we can have... Uh, uh, the, the thinner is the grid, the better is our description of the space and of the processes. So our aim, our wish is to use a finer and finer grids. And that's why it is, as Ricardo is saying, uh, when we get faster computers, we reduce the size, uh, the step of our grid. We increase the number of computing points in order to get closer to reality. And that's why we always wait for one day to get the results. Except if you are doing tests, if we are doing, if we are running the model for, to perform tests, then we want to get results very fast, and then we we simplify the description of the space, and uh, and then we can get results in minutes. But for uh, professional purposes, we always uh, have long runs. That's why we cannot, we have not a big freedom on choosing the kind of language that the programming language that we are using we really need a faster uh, a fast um, processor a processing language and fortran has that ability and uh, another thing that fortran has is that it is pretty old so there is a lot of history written in fortran that we are still using or reusing so you, you couldn't rewrite this in perl you're saying uh, we can write it in, uh, we can modify it, and, uh, and we are doing it in order to run it in parallel, uh, uh, to use parallel processing, but we, it is not easy to get uh, rid of our history. It is not easy to, to um, uh, reprogram everything, uh, uh, especially being, uh, uh, being sure that, or, or almost sure that we will not get faster, uh, faster codes. We have tried to reprogram something in, on C, but it was not as fast as it is in Fortran. And I can also say, for instance, even if you go to Python, when you go to, to, to numerical Python, it is uh, Fortran behind the Python. So Fortran is really good for performance. So. Uh what, what kind of uh, institution would, would actually start using uh, Mohit? Is this something purely academic? Uh, or, or would somebody, or do you guys know if anybody in the government actually uses this to uh, map maybe ravines or lakes in, in your country? Yeah, it is, uh, in the beginning, it was purely academic because everything that is new starts in uh, the academy and it is uh, academic. But uh, as uh, it, had, uh, it has got uh, developed and uh, it, has, it has included more processes and it has been able to simulate more, more state variables, uh, it, it started being used for management and it is used for, um, uh, for companies, for consulting uh, companies as well. From our group, in our group, we have generated two spin-offs to companies that are um, working mostly with Moid, and they are doing uh, commercial applications of Moid. 
And there are many users around the world that are doing the same. So it is no longer a purely academic software. It's, uh, it's, it's, um, it is being used for academic purposes. So we are still developing new processes, improving the code, so including new knowledge in the, in the software. But as the knowledge is included in the software and it is ready to be used to answer uh, practical questions for, for environmental management, then it is used by, by those companies and by other companies uh, around the world. It is being used, in fact, in 42 uh, countries uh, now. Uh, that's a lot. And uh, what kind of out output do you get from the uh, from the program? Is it purely text, or do you get graphics, or what 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 do you expect to see after you run it for a day, for a night? For a night, we you, we get graphs because uh, we get millions of numbers, and uh, and we cannot analyze those numbers without the graphs. So it is um, without graphs, it is uh, it would be useless, and that's why associated to Moid, there is also a graphical interface that is used to run the model, but especially to visualize the results. Hey, hey, so we, we actually, can, uh, we've actually yeah, gone yeah. to your gallery. We're actually going to show one of the things for the, for the visual audience that we have. Uh, we can actually we can actually see one of the outputs. You can describe what we're seeing in a second. Here, here we are. So what are we looking yeah. at here? Yeah, here we are seeing salinity. Uh, uh, get, so fresh water getting out from the Douro River in the north of Portugal, uh -huh. and it was this was simulated some years ago when there is there was a strong flood, and this flood has destroyed one bridge, and uh, in uh, it happened when a bus was crossing the bridge and it was a, a very bad disaster. Everybody that was in the bus died. And the, and the bodies disappeared and were transported into the sea. So we see the red is fresh water and the blue is marine water, is sea water. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then we have colors, the colors in between, they show the mixing. And in fact, the, uh, the bodies of the, uh, of the people that were inside the, the bus, they were, tra they were transported by this flow. Wow! Wow! And and so, what would a grid size be for that? Are you are you, are you down to like the, the the yard by yard level or meter by meter, or is it way bigger than that? And now we are something like two hundred meters by two hundred meters. Okay. Okay. And so that's uh, millions of grid points, though, right? Exactly, because we also have something like fifty layers. So it is uh, we we get millions of uh, computing points. Uh, wow! So it's fifty horizontal layers. So in the in the vertical. Now you have the horizontal grid, and then you have layers. Now I understand, thanks to things like is it chaos theory or something like that, that if you change the scale of the grid, you might get slightly different results. Have you seen that actually happen? Yeah, that that can happen, uh, but it's, we we try to avoid it. So we try to get a, a grid to use a grid that is fine enough to reproduce the, the phenomena that we are interested on. For instance, in this grid that you have, in this um, flow that you have uh, just uh, shown, we are seeing the, the movement of the water. We cannot see the waves. Here, the grid is too coarse to simulate the waves. If we want to simulate free surface waves, in this case, we have to use a grid, a grid step of the order of five meters. And, uh, and um, uh, so, uh, uh, in fact, is, uh, as you are saying, it, the, the, the phenomena that we can simulate depends on the grid size that we can use. And, uh, but uh, when we are thinking about the phenomena, here we are thinking about uh, uh, the tide and the movement due to the wind, the movement of the water. Here, uh, the, the solution must be uh, slightly or, or I will not say independent of, of the size of the grid, but it must not, it can, the result cannot be very much dependent on that. Now, uh, uh, looking at the graphic, it kind of looks uh, kind of similar to how an oil spill looks. Could this be also used to map or at least uh, simulate how an, uh, an oil spill would uh, spread out in the sea, for example? Yes. It did. Go on, it go has on. been used. 
it has been used for that also. It's one of the main um, uses of this of Moit is oil spills and this kind of stuff, environmental disaster and prevention. Oh, I see. I see. We we are we are showing one of the graphics now. Ah, oh, that's great. Yeah, that is, that is the what you are seeing on the graph. You are seeing numbers, and these numbers are dates. And uh, this is the location of uh, a spill uh, between the the twenty two uh, the twenty second of I don't remember. I think it was November. This, we have produced this during the accident with the the. Um, uh, a oil tanker called the Prestige that uh, sank uh, clo in the, uh, close to Galicia in the northern part of Iberia. And uh, it was really a bad, uh, a bad uh, incident. And here you are seeing the, um, the oil spill. So on the 20, 21st, 22nd, and the location and uh, it has hit the land uh, 10, 10 days after the spill. Now, lo looking, uh, sorry, uh, looking at the uh, project in uh, more of a developer-centric uh, view, how, how, easy w how easy would it be for somebody to uh, start getting into the project and, and contribute something? Yeah, in, usually the, the users, they, they, they start using the code as it is. So we teach them how it works and uh, we teach them how to use the graphical interface that is associated to Moid. And then they start using it. Then we have two types of users. Those that are happy with that, they only they want to be users and users of the code. And then we have other people that have more curiosity and they want to simulate things that are not yet included into the code. And those, they become developers and they will they contribute for the development of the code. And that's how we want it. We want to keep it alive is uh, through the new users that uh, that uh, contribute for the for the uh, for the update of the code and and is it only students in the uh, university there in the Insti instituto superior tecnico or is it uh, uh, anybody from the world or do you do you accept any any contributions from anywhere yes we accept contributions from anywhere and in fact we stimulate that and uh, it is much uh, more difficult to get developers, uh, contributors that uh, are aiming to develop, than to get users. And that's why each time there is a new developer, we try to give him all the support and uh, in order to, to get him involved and to, 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 to make the, um, his developments available to all the community, the users' community. Uh, is is the application uh, only in Portuguese or is it uh, also English? That does it support multiple languages? Yeah, it is. It is written in, I'd say, bad English. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the best kind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we try to do it. We have uh, the first time we write anything. It is always in English in order to, to reach a, a wide uh, user's community. And then uh, when we have people from Portugal, from the Portuguese speaking countries, then we, if we have text in Portuguese, we also make it uh, available. And sometimes those guys, they also contribute with text in Portugal, especially in Brazil, that is a big country, and, uh, and they use mostly Portuguese there. Is there anything you've seen in this software by using it over the years that actually surprised you when you ran the numbers? Uh, surprised me in, sorry, can you repeat? Surprised you when you actually ran the application. Did you get any surprising results ever? Oh yes, that, uh, that happens very, very often because uh, when we think about the environment, we always we have our ideas and we think that uh, we understand uh, what is happening. And uh, finally, when we start uh, calculating things and we put numbers on it, sometimes the results, they are quite different from what we were expecting. And so this is uh, how we uh, can learn with the model. So we have to teach everything to the model in the sense that uh, 
all the processes that are included in the model, all the equations, we have to write them before and to provide them to the model. So the model will never uh, teach us about the equations. We have to teach the model about the equations, but then the model teaches us about the results. And, uh, and um, sometimes we have uh, uh, ideas about how the environment works and they are not right. And, uh, and we learn this with the model. That's pretty amazing. Well, we're almost out of time, sadly. We started the show a little late, so we have to finish a little early, comparatively. Um, what license did, did, is it under, and why did you choose that? Well, it is Maybe. GP, GPL, uh, because uh, we believe that uh, it is a nice uh, license for this project, but it, it, because it requires people to give back what, uh, what they are doing. Uh, so, uh, this this was mainly the reason the, the GPL was chosen. And have you got contributions from outside people that you would have expected to contribute to it? I mean, people that are, that are in other institutions, have you gotten patches and stuff from them? It, it yes. Just... So, oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. Yes, he's saying yes. R Romero's saying yes. So uh, cool. Uh, was was that was that nice that that happened? Yes, it is very nice. And uh, but it is not. It doesn't happen so as often as we would like because in in fact uh, only a few people is ready to to be uh, to become a, a developer. Good, good. Okay, like I said, we're almost out of time. Is there any question we didn't ask that you want to make sure our audience is uh, aware of? Okay, I just could say that to emphasize the, the difficulties of getting into this project is because it is a very large project. It's something like one million lines of code. So this is one of the reasons it's hard to get into. And also because people need to understand the, the, the physical processes they are or environmental processes and also Oftentimes, the future contributors don't know how to program, so they are also learning to program. Mm. So it's lots of stuff to learn to to be a contributor. So uh, you find the quality in, <clears throat> in a very large pro project. Uh, so, so you're saying most of this code was written by students? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, but, uh, that's yeah. the quality of code there. Okay. <laughs> this, I don't know. Um, but it, uh, the reason it's able to, to, to grow is because, as we said, it's object-oriented. So okay. it's very modular and it's easy to plug in new stuff to the, to the project because there, are, there is a framework that may, once you learn the framework, it's easy to incorporate new features or new uh, concepts into the code. Okay. And also, yeah, there is a continuous, yeah. continuous integration policy to, mm -hmm. to help you. Yeah, but th these students that we are talking about, they are PhD students. They are, in fact, people that are uh, stu studying, but at a high level already. Okay, very good, very good. Well, uh, like I said, we're almost out of time, so I just want to thank the both of you, Romero and Ricardo, for coming on the show, talking about Mohid, and as people will find out about this from this show, they'll, um, they'll be um, probably uh, checking in with you. So thank you for being on the show. Okay, thank thanks. you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, thank you. That was uh, Romero Neves and uh, Ricardo Miranda talking to us about Mohid. What do you think, Guillermo? Or Guillermo. Uh, I keep saying Gamerol because that's your handle everywhere. <laughs> that's that's fine. A lot of people used to call me Gamerol, which is a lot easier to say. Yeah. Uh, well, well, it seems that it is indeed uh, a modeling water, which is uh, you know something <laughs> influence, which is which is something I, I what, did not expect. Uh, <laughs> you called it though at the beginning of the show. <laughs> you know, it's just uh, all, all all this uh, all this expertise and what I do just it just comes to me sometimes. I, I, uh, you're, you're gifted. You're gifted, sir. That's what it is. You know it, man. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I I actually find this a lot interesting. Uh, interesting, especially with the uh, whole oil spills and everything like that. I uh, there there should be uh, there should be a lot of uh, useful things that you can do with this application in certain areas like that. Uh, 
But yeah, what, what, what did you think? Well, you know, it was interesting that the reason I, I brought up the oil spill uh, graphic was that the, uh, <clears throat> the prediction and the actual were almost spot on. So whatever these guys are doing to write this software is really pretty amazing stuff. When you consider how many, how many points have to be calculated and how much different, you know, vectors and stuff to compute all that, pretty amazing stuff. I'm, I'm glad it's in Fortran, so I don't ever have to contribute code to it, <laughs> but I can use it if I want to, maybe. We'll see. It's, it's like that. So, um, uh, yeah, uh, anything else before we uh, wrap up the show here? No, not really. I, I enjoyed this show, even though we had a lot of hiccups. Uh, it was extremely <laughs> fun. <laughs> yeah, for those of you listening at home and not seeing the live feed, we uh, we didn't get started until like a, almost a half hour late. So that's why this is a short show this week. Uh, but at least it happened. Finally, Mohid got into the stream. Speaking of shows that get into the stream, we've actually added one more guest in the upcoming series of weeks. Let me quickly run through the list of people that are coming up. Next week, we're going to have Podlove, which is uh, infrastructure for improving the overall technical infrastructure infrastructure for podcasting. So it'll be sort of a meta show because it'll be a podcast about podcasting, which will be sort of cool. Uh, after that, Cryu, Cryu, I don't know how that's pronounced, C-R-I-U, which is a checkpoint restore facility for Linux in user space. Sounds like fun. Interesting. Tygo.io is an agile project management platform. Deviation TX is a replacement firmware for the Wakara Devo series of RC transmitters. Should be fun. Just added to the list, uh, sort of a follow-on to the show we did about Bitcore, I think it was two years ago maybe, is Copay which is a secure shared wallet. We actually mentioned it briefly in the other show, but we're going to go on and just do a whole show about that. Basically, you and I can share Bitcoin to, between the two of us, and it requires both signatures to be able to release them, stuff like that. Ooh, that is really cool. Uh, Lucy is an open implementation of Cold Fusion Markup Language, CFML. Weave, uh, I think we just added that too. No, we had that last time. Uh, it's for Docker container-based deployments. So that should be cool. So it orchestrates a whole bunch of Docker things. And since we just had the Docker show a couple weeks ago, this should actually fit in really well. We also have uh, on the short list, we're still looking at dates, uh, the Koha in, uh, Information Library System. So our, our IT library, ILS, just put ILS. That's what it is. It's an open source library management system. A tool app, which is an application lifecycle management tool. Uh, we are, in fact, having the lead developers of Dart come on and talk about what's happened in Dart since the two years that we had Seth Ladd on. And also, I'm getting in touch with people at the Angular JS project to find out how that's all working. Seems like it's going to be pretty cool. You can find out about these and more by going to the homepage, twit.tv slash floss. There's a big link right there to our big giant spreadsheet. And on there, you can see who I am actually getting on the show. But, you know, I can always use more. So if there's some project that I am not talking to yet that you want to see on the show, have the project leader email me, Merlin at Stonehenge.com, and I'll put them right on the top of the shortlist. Uh, you can follow me on Floss Weekly, Randall L. Schwartz. We also Floss Weekly on Twitter. We have a live chat. We took a couple questions from that today. Uh, you can go to uh, live.twit.tv at the time we're taping. Generally, that's 8.30 a.m. Pacific time, uh, West Coast time, on Wednesdays. Uh, you can follow me at Merlin, M-E-R-L-Y-N, but more likely you can follow me on Google+. Plus. I'm Randall L. Schwartz there, and I think I just said that already. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be at Yapsi, the Yet Another Pearl Conference, in Salt Lake City in early June, and I'm hoping to be in Brazil in July at the Fizzle Conference but I haven't heard back from them yet. And that's all I'm plugging. Anything you want to plug there, uh, Gamera? Uh, well, uh, people can hit me up on Twitter with uh, my handle is at Gamera or on YouTube, which is uh, really complicated. You can just Google me. <laughs> <laughs> That makes sense. Cool, cool, cool. Well, thank you uh, for joining me. Thank you for being a co-host. And I uh, hope to see you. I'm, I'm th I think I'm going to head your way uh, in about two weeks. So we should uh, hook up this time. I should be around. That's good. Very cool. And you're not you're not flying back in from your vacation two weeks from now either, right? No, I'm, I'm, I'm home now. So that's fine. I'm going to stay here for at least three weeks. Okay, good plan. Good plan. Well, uh, once again, we've put another show in the can. We'll see you all again next week on Floss Weekly. Floss Weekly.